Welcome to Sports Blog's special presentation of this Google Hangout with a true sports icon. I'm Seth Everett from Sports Blog. Glad you could be with us, and we are introducing someone who really needs no introduction. There are so many different people that are going to be watching this show that are going to know Nancy from so many different places. They'll know her from her work as a broadcaster. They'll know her from her work as a player, as a general manager. There's been so many things that she has been around and, of course, her nickname, Lady Magic. Nancy Lieberman, thank you so much for doing this. Welcome to the Google Hangout for Sports Blog. All right, let's take a look at the participants that we have. First of all, uh, Matt Masico is with the National Basketball Retired Players Association, of which, Nancy, you're very uh, active with. Let's welcome Matt. Matt, how are you? I'm good, Seth. How are you? It's great to have you. And, of course, you know, you're familiar with Nancy's work, correct? I am, yeah. She is uh, one of our board members and a very integral part of our organization. Matt, I have loved being a part of this. Uh, it's going on a year now, and I just never knew how powerful the uh, the retired players association was and what they do in communities and how we work together. And to get into our board meetings and to know that you have the power to make change together in different communities has been uh, very thrilling for me. Uh, it's more than I could have ever expected. Well, that's fantastic. We we love having you, and uh, we have a big community service initiative, and uh, one of our big goals this year is to come together, both from a retired players association and a players association, uh, current players, to try and get on the same page uh, um, to transition from life after basketball uh, for all players. Well, that's what we talked about even in our board meeting during the uh, NBA All-Star game is it's – it's it's going to happen. I mean, if you play basketball, whether you're a Harlem Globetrotter or a WNBA player or an NBA guy, you are going to be a retired player one day, and we really want those guys and gals to be a part of what we're doing because we really rely on each other. Uh, the chapters are, you know, pretty dominant in what they're trying to do in their communities. And, we, you know, I mean, everything from giving the Dave DeBuscher scholarships uh, to former players' families, just to enhance quality of life. Th this is more, like I said, it, I, I didn't really know at first what I was getting into, and it's one of the, the neatest things that I can say that I've ever been a part of in my career. It really is fascinating. Uh, let's welcome in a true WNBA star. Uh, she's now a member of the New York Liberty, so she gets to see all this snow. Uh, we get to make sure that she's also uh, on the executive committee for the WNBA Players Association. Let's welcome Tanisha Wright. And Tanisha, first of all, welcome to the Liberty and say hi to Nancy. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Thanks, Seth. I appreciate that. Um, hey, Tanisha. How are you, Nancy? You know what? Um, I've had, as you well know, the opportunity, uh, Mel knows this, I was calling your games in college when you were just starting to make your mark. And I look at you now, and I think you are a tremendous role model uh, for women in sports. I am so proud of everything you have been able to do throughout your career. And I don't know if I've really had an opportunity to say that personally to you. I thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. Hopefully, you know, our paths will cross, and we'll get a chance to be able to, to talk and, and chat it up. No, I would love that. I would love that. You see so much of that in with, with men in sports. You, you don't realize the crossover and the friendships, and we women have to do more of that. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. Interesting. Uh, let's go to, uh, of course, the man who is the television voice of your Oklahoma City Thunder. Thunder. I know him from, from the Pacific Northwest, but none of us. The great, the great. Ryan Davis. Ryan Brian, Davis. How are you, Brian, how are you, man? I'm doing well, Seth, and the check is in the mail. Thank you very much. But uh, here's the thing. Time. How often are you stealing <laughs> stuff that you hear on the pregame, from uh, the Thunder pregame from Nancy? How much are you stealing when you use it in your call? Well, and you remember, I've been stealing from Nancy for going on 20 years because we actually go back to our previous lives doing college basketball, particularly in Conference USA. So to be able to hang out with Lady Magic uh, night to night on Fox Sports Oklahoma, uh, albeit most of the time electronically because she's in the studio and we're at the arena, it's a real thrill. And, and having had a chance to get to know her a little bit more over the last couple of years has been truly, truly special. I'm really really stoked to be here today. Well, thanks, BD, because these relationships, these friendships mean a lot. You know, a lot of us, pros, whether we're at the arena, 
you know, just in our vocation of what we do on a daily basis, but to be able over the last three years to do the TV with you and go out or have a drink or just kind of talk about family, it goes so beyond what we do on the basketball court. And you do forge those relationships and friendships. friendships. And, and I told you this I before, you, this you do before. so you do so. You do so, you do so much, much for us in the studio because you bridge you the bridge audience that's the watching audience. the game with the people in the studio, and that really takes a pro's pro to be able to do that. Thank you very much. Well, you make it special, Gal. I promise you that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let's uh, continue our introductions and welcome in a guy who I am proud to admit today is the best friend I have that I have never met except on a video screen. Let's <laughs> welcome in the great U Sam Amick from USA Today. Sam, you cannot get rid of me. My friend, Mr. Everett, how the heck are you? You're always on my laptop screen. Good to see you again. Hey, Nancy, Sam. Nancy, thanks for letting me join you today. This is a pleasure. I appreciate it. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? I, I, I peruse all your stuff. Uh, you are a fixture in, in sports. And thank you for taking time to be here. We all know who you are, but now we know you in the in the flesh. Likewise, and welcome to my humble abode here. Thanks for joining. He's Thanks. got a face for he's got a face for print journalism. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, let's welcome in let's welcome in Travis Berkeley, of course, assistant general manager for the Texas Legends of the D League, which of course, uh, Nancy, you are directly involved in. So Travis and and Nancy, you guys go way back. We do. Uh, his family and myself have been friends since I stepped uh, into Dallas-Fort Worth back in 1980. And so I've known Travis for a long time and, and got to know him on an even greater level when I was uh, coaching uh, the, the legends in our first year five years ago. I'm telling you, I said this before we got on Google Hangout, Travis Blakely is one of the most sincere, kind, hardworking, talented guys, people I have ever been around. He can do anything and he is so nice and so kind. It's we should all strive to be uh, the type of character that you have, Travis. And and you're a heck of a coach and whether it's sales or marketing, you the world is your your oyster. It really is. Well, uh, coach, I, I don't really know how to respond to that. That's an incredible welcoming um, I, my, I guess my only response would be that I'm, I'm humbled and I'm honored to be here and uh, looking forward to this conversation, this Google Hangout. Um, many of you will ref, you'll hear me refer to Nancy as coach. Uh, my professional career started with her as my coach and uh, that's how I'm going to forever refer to her as and uh, I'm, I'm internally, eternally grateful to the opportunity she's afforded to me and uh, the relationship and friendship that we have. So Nancy, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's my pleasure. So let's start it off with our panelists, but Nancy, I wanted to ask the first question, and that is when you're juggling, when you're juggling all the different assets that you're involved in, is there a day job, is there a night job, is there is there a scenario for yourself where you get so inundated with basketball that it's hard to prioritize? No, it doesn't. Um, you know, most people don't remember, I didn't get to have plan A in my career. And plan A was to be a great basketball player with a league to play in. So I had to, at the prime of my career at 23 years old, when there was no WNBA, and those early women's leagues were folding, you know, you'd play a year and fold, I had to start doing radio, and I had to start doing TV, writing books, doing you know appearances, doing other things in my career just to be able to stay close to a game that I love every single day. And as I got farther down into my television career and the WNBA started, I was really fortunate to play one year at 39. At the end of my career, I was just blessed to be able to eke out one year, and then the next step was coaching. So I really believe, like, I, I'm not a victim, I'm a victor, because I believe all those experiences for me, all the, you know, ups and downs, the, the tears that I had for not being able to, to play in front of an audience uh, in my prime, it really molded me into the woman and the, the teacher, the coach, that I believe that I am. So my true desire would be to coach, be an assistant coach in the NBA one day, 
but the other things that I'm doing, whether it's TV, uh, whether it's uh, you know the assistant GM for the Texas Legends, coaching in the D League, I must be around the people that are going to hire me because it's almost a little bit of a curse, and I think some of you will understand this. Everybody knows me, but not a lot of people know me. You know, Travis knows me, or BD knows me, or uh, Mel Greenberg knows me as a person, as a human being, but they know my name, and I have to earn the respect of the coaches and the GMs in the NBA because that's a very competitive situation. It's not just because I'm a woman. It's because there are guys who are just as good as me who are trying to get into that league. So that's when, you know, you see me on Sirius Radio, you see me with the D-League, you see me uh, with the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm just trying to stay relevant with the people that are going to give me that next opportunity, and that's to be a, a teacher, continue teaching and be a coach. And I know that was long-winded, but that's just how it is. Well, you're the only person allowed on this thing that is allowed to be long-winded. That, that, that's what they told me. Everyone else can't be. Um, let's start off with our panel because there's a lot of different directions we can go with that. But let's go to BD. Uh, Brian, you get the first panelist question here with uh, with Nancy. Uh, woo woo! I, I got to tell you, it, this is perfect timing because right now one of the guys that we're sitting on is one of the hottest topics in the NBA and in fact in all of sports. The recent play of Russell Westbrook and Nancy uh, having played at a very high level, a Hall of Fame level as you did. How hard is it for Westbrook to uh, continue what he's been doing? Had a month the, the likes of which had been accomplished only in the past by Oscar Robertson, uh, what he's been doing now, this string of double doubles or triple doubles. Uh, you know, this guy has put himself in the conversation with guys like Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. How difficult is it for Westbrook to be able to stay in that level of play night to night at this level? Uh, BD, it's a great question. Uh, the most important thing for Russell, and he might not say it or not, but he doesn't hear the outside noise. That's just for us, the media. It's for other people, the fans, to really just enjoy. When you are that athlete and you are in that moment and you are at, you're playing at the you know, peak of your powers, you, it's like a, a horse with blinders. You're in the now, and there's not a lot of thinking that goes on, and you're just you're conditioned by the system, but Russell is locked in right now at such a high intensity level. Nobody has to tell him to get, you know, to get up and get ready for a game or to play harder on a possession. You know, I heard Leslie interview him and she was asking him, does he really get a chance to think about what he's doing? Because what he's doing is not just on a high MVP level, it's on a historic level. And I don't know if you had a chance to hear that in, in the post game with us. I've spent time with Michael, and I've spent time with Oscar Robertson, and I asked these guys about today's players, and certainly Russell's name comes up all the time. So he's not supposed to know what he's doing. He's just supposed to do it. Nancy, I wanted to ask you about what's next for you. Of everything you've accomplished, and that list is certainly very, very long, the coaching aspect and, and what lies ahead. As you're well aware, you were mentioned in my neck of the woods as a possibility uh, for the Sacramento Kings. And I'm based in Northern California, covered the Kings for a lot of years. I know Kings fans certainly are very curious about you and whether or not you might kind of partner up with George Carl here. What I wondered was, A, do you see that as a, a real possibility maybe in the summer? And B, what's the backstory between you and George and that relationship and uh, what kind of connection you guys might have? Well, let me start by saying I'm really happy for George. He's an amazing guy. We uh, we have a lot of history between us. Uh, I can remember when, you know, there's that, that family of coaches and players, and we all used to go to the Jimmy V together, even when Jimmy was alive. And I can remember one time having my son TJ. He had to be maybe four or five years old. And, you know, George's son, you know, Kobe was babysitting him on the other court playing tennis with him so I could do my thing with Krzyzewski and Barkley and all the other coaches. So um, there's this family and there's this respect. And, and more than anything, forget about me. I'm really happy that George is where he belongs. He belongs on a bench. He is a tremendous teacher of the game. Uh, I mean, I was in Las Vegas last summer with him at a coach's camp. 
And I learned more from George just being around him for a week and seeing his enthusiasm. Uh, he's going to really help turn that uh, franchise around. And you could already see the little bits of the uptick where it sure. can go with up-tempo basketball. And, you know, if George were to give me an opportunity, I would count my blessings and I would run through a wall for him and, and make the players better. I would do whatever was needed to do. I would teach. It would be a great story. Thanks, Nancy. Now, uh, Nancy has already stated that, that, Travis, you know her quite well. So based on that, your question has to be better than these guys. I, I'm sorry. I'm not going to attempt to rival <laughs> Mr. Amick here, um, <laughs> or Isn't or yourself, Seth. Uh, <laughs> but but I, I I am fortunate to have known Nancy for a very long time, and I've also been very fortunate to be a part of her coaching staff, um, the first ever female head coach of an NBA D League team. And as such, I would like to know how has that experience set you up for success at the NBA level, Nancy, and to kind of piggyback on uh, Sam, no offense again, sir, um, <laughs> with the given nature of the NBA coaching carousel, how quickly do you feel an opportunity is going to present itself? Uh, I'm rather confident, and so are those people around you. So we just like to hear from you. Well, thanks, Travis. Uh, when Donnie Nelson gave me the opportunity uh, to coach in the D-League for the Legends, uh, I was over the top excited because Donnie had this belief and he's the type of guy that when he puts his arms around you and you feel that you're being protected by your owner, you can, you can do anything, everything is possible. And I can remember asking Donnie, uh, you know, he hired me a, a year before we got started. I'm like, what is the desire of you and Evan Wiley, our other owner? Do you, are, do you want to win? Are we trying to pack the house? Are we wanting to be community leaders? Are we developing players? You know, I asked him all the important questions so I knew what he the expectation was. And he went all of the above, <laughs> as only Donnie Nelson would say. So I knew that winning was very important. So I am, I am firm, but I am fair. We set the tone early, as you know, in practice because I didn't want my stilettos to... Uh, give any assumption that there was a weakness. But we loved our players, as you know. Uh, we treated them with respect. I was tough on them when I had to be. But I knew that somewhere we would be doing life together, even in those moments where we were pouring love and kindness and tough love into our team. Uh, what I was trying to do with us as a staff is just have us be so rock solid in trust and belief that in our tough moments, and there were going to be tough moments, they would still know that we loved and cared them and that we were in their corner and we wanted to be there to help them. And there's not a month that goes by that Booker, uh, Joe Alexander, uh, Antonio Daniels, Reese, I get phone calls from so many players who just thank me, thank us for what we did for them. And it's, it's really unbelievable. It just it makes you feel so good about what you chose to do. And I knew right then and there because there's a handful, there might be five handful of NBA coaches and D-League coaches that help set us up for success, that help set me up for success because we made the playoffs in our first year. And I still believe that if Antonio Daniels doesn't get pulled up to the Sixers you know, by Doug Collins, we have a chance to beat Tulsa and advance to the conference finals. Mm. So uh, I know that those guys looked at me in a different way. And let me succinctly tell you how. When their mothers were sick, when a mom had cancer, when a, a guy broke up with his girlfriend, when they were having troubles at home with baby mama's mamas, they would call me at night and they wanted to talk to me because they also saw me as a mom. Because a lot of these young men have been raised primarily by their mothers. And so things that they might not say to a man, a male coach, they felt comfortable saying and they trusted me with that information. And that meant more to me than anything. I was going to coach him up. Uh, Travis was going to coach him up. But we were going to love these guys and influence their lives. And I believe there's a place for that in the NBA 
and the fact that I know the game and can teach the game and can X and O, that's just icing on the cake. Now, listening to that coaching strategy, Tanisha, I'm watching you watch this. What's your reaction to that? And then, of course, obviously, I know you want to ask a question, too. Yeah, to me, it makes sense. You know, it's always great to hear the perspective of a woman who, who's been able to go to the male side and, um, and be a coach and infiltrate that because it is a, a close-knit family. So um, hearing Nancy give her experience and how um, women are able to relate to men on a different level than men are able to relate, you know, it, it opens up your eyes, definitely. Um, so I'm here representing the WMBPA, and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask a question or get your opinion um, on something. So as you know, WMBPA is going through a major restructure with the new hiring of um, Evie Goldstein as the new director of operations. And your experience of playing and your experience of being around the GM side and different things like that, just being around basketball, um, how have you seen the WMBPA MBPA grow? And what are some things that you would like to see um, for the union now with the new re restructuring of it? Well, Tanisha, the union is really important. That's a, a very big, vital family uh, element for us. Traditionally, it's been my opinion that we as women don't embrace each other. And we have to get over some of that stuff, whether it's jealousy or what, whatever it might be. I'm just being real. Okay. And we should, we should honor each other. You know, when, uh, when the Players Association, when the union, they should continue to try to educate uh, today's player, uh, talk to you about what you're going to do post-career, what interests you in your post-career, and do we have experts there, whether it's broadcasting, whether it's coaching, whether it's in the front office, because we have a lot of players sometimes, once we stop playing, people feel like they're not connected to anything. And we've been fortunate, you know, when you're on a team, and you know this better than anybody, you have, you know, uh, 10, 12, 15 sisters on a daily basis. Sometimes you don't even want to be around them every day because there's people around you all the time, right? This so is true. <laughs> it, it, it's just so important. When you retire, all of a sudden it becomes lonely because you don't really know who your friends were. Did they like me because of who I was or because of my influence? And there could be, you know, you could be a little unsure of, of the people around you. And I think that the, the union needs to really create that next phase of our career. And we have to do this congruently, together. What's the vision? How are we going to get there? Are we all in? You know, I mean, and if we're having some issues, we should address the issues without people saying, well, I'm not following you on Twitter or Facebook anymore. You know, I don't like you. We don't have to always agree. We can, you know, I, I, this is what I used to tell my coaching staff. We can agree, disagree, but when we walk out, we must be aligned. You can say whatever you want in our meetings, but when we step outside together and deal with the membership, we must be together on what we want them to know. They're trusting us. And this is something that we have to continue to grow on the women's side. And, and I see, I mean, look at LeBron James and Chris Paul. These are like the superstars of the NBA and they want to be the head of these unions. We need that with us, not just as an afterthought. We need to have all of us all in so we could just have a, we're, we're, this. The WNBA is a business. It's not a girls club. It's a business. And we better sell tickets and we better drive TV, you know, viewership and radio and, and be nice to the media and make sure that we're all rowing in the same direction. Nancy, Thank real you. quick, real quick, Nancy, I just want to mention this and then we'll see if we can squeeze in a couple more questions. Um, you're very active with the Nancy Lieberman Foundation. Tell us about the upcoming Dream Ball Gala, which is coming up on April 16th. Well, if you would have asked me 25 years ago if I would be a philanthropist, I would have went, does that revolve around me? Uh, I mean, because when you're an athlete, everything's about you. And it's almost like when I didn't have the WNBA in my, you know, at, at the height of my, you know, magical powers, I started, you know, what can I do for other people? And a lot of people don't know I was a poor kid 
from a one-parent family growing up in Queens. There were nights that we didn't have any heat, electricity. We were one grandparent away from food stamps. And I used to just pray, like, if God would just help me be something that I would give back to other people. And then the man in my life who changed my life, Muhammad Ali, who's been my friend since I was 19, you know, he taught me to be fearless in whatever I do, but to help other people and serve people. And that's what the foundation does. We've sent six kids to college last year. We've given out over 1,200 laptops and tablets to kids to be on a level playing field in the classroom. The foundation, we now have been blessed to build 13 dream courts around the country because it was my dream to be on a court because nobody discriminated or profiled me when I was on a court. It was, can you play or not play? So uh, we're building six this year. We're building another six in 2016. We have educational programming, uh, each one teach one. It, you know, that's a mentorship program. We have book reading programs, uh, backpack programs where we've given out 5,000 backpacks with school supplies. But every one of the things in the foundation that we do, we do with love and with kindness. We want to be able to bridge that generation that we don't know to our generation. And, you know, it's like Tanisha and I could look at each other and we know we look different. She knows I'm white and old. Don't say too old. I know she's African American and young, but that doesn't mean we can't love and help each other and push each other to be to be better. And that's what the foundation does. It bridges those gaps for people. And it, our dream ball is amazing because I mean we're going to honor Tony Romo uh, with the Lifetime Achievement Award in Dallas. Uh, you know, we built dream courts for Larry Fitzgerald and Billy Crystal and Jordan Sparks. We're getting ready to do one for Muhammad Ali in Phoenix. I mean, and it sounds like I don't even want this on any level to sound about me because it takes a village. It takes people believing in you and wanting to help you. And it, it, it's, it's overwhelming to know what the foundation has been able to do uh, for children. Uh, I will say this in closing on the foundation. When I was 14 years old, I made a, a USA tryout in, in New York, and I didn't have money to fly to Albuquerque for the tryouts. And a neighbor took a can of corn, emptied it out, and that can went around the neighborhood. And strangers put money in a can to send me to the Olympic tryouts. I'll never, I might not be on this hangout today if strangers didn't put money in a can to pay for my hotel my meals and my airfare to Albuquerque back in 1974. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Matt, take the floor. Nancy, as uh, some people may not know, you are on the board of directors for the Retired Players Association. So I was just hoping you could speak to the one or two big objectives that you have for this 2015 year. We, uh, we just turned over a new board, and uh, Thurl Bailey is our chairman. Um, you know, it, Dwight Davis is our, you know, second in command. I really am proud of what we've done over the last year, and we're continuing to grow. And when I say grow, we want to be more transparent to our membership. We want to be able to hear our membership. We want to continue to build relationships with the, the WNBA, the NBA Players Association. Uh, we had, you know, we were very fortunate during All-Star to have Adam Silver come in and spend almost an hour with us uh, in our board meeting. And we could share with Commissioner Silver um, our concerns uh, about the growth of the game, where we want to go together. We really do want to make sure that every player from women's basketball to the NBA to the Globetrotters, uh, they know that we're their next destination. And we're going to help them with health, with education. We're going to help in their communities. There's so much that we want to do. It, it's exciting. You know, you kind of have this, uh, you know, kind of held back emotion because we have amazing former players that are so bright and have such big hearts. And we want to be a part of changing that next generation's life and helping membership for that matter. It's 
It's it's a great it's a great venture. There, there's no question. Uh, we just wanted to confirm uh, that there, some of the remaining people couldn't get on technically, so we didn't want to think we were ignoring anybody and uh, making sure. But uh, some great questions, some great topics. We could do whole hangouts on just any one of the various ventures. Uh, we could do a thunder, you know, hangout. We could do something on the NBP, NBA players, WNBA players association. There's so many different things to, to go for. I really want to thank all the participants for for giving up some of their time. Uh, but the last word goes to you, Nancy. And I, I wanted to ask you. Um, there's a lot of people watching, people that found you uh, on social media, fans of your work, fans of the teams you work for. What's your message to them? My message to them is just be be good. Every you know, I can be better tomorrow than I than I am today. Just be good to people. You know, I mean, don't ask for much in return. Just be kind and loving and try to help people. Uh, if you're a parent, I'm a mom. My son TJ plays at the University of Richmond. Be a great parent and and just help each other. I mean, if there's anybody who's been on uh, today on Hangout and you need me, just you know, the guys have my email, just reach out to me, and uh, I'm always there. I'm almost a little too accessible, but uh, I don't want to be bigger than the show. I want to just be part of people's success. So uh, I'm here to help in any capacity, and I appreciate that uh, each of you took time to kind of hear my story and uh, throw questions at me. That's great. Thank you so Thanks, much Nancy. to all the people and uh, all the people who've been a, a part of this. Uh, Nancy, great work, uh, not only with the Thunder, but with all the different ventures, and uh, it would be amazing if, if we found you with George Carl this summer, but uh, again, that's preemptive, and we'll just have to wait and, wait and see. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time, and uh, I hope to do this again real soon. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Thank Thanks, you. Nancy. Thanks, guys. And Thanks, uh, for everybody at uh, Sports Blog, and of course for Nancy Lieberman, I'm Seth Everett. Thanks for watching this Google Hangout.